Yeah, that's inside job. <laughs> that's Lex. I'm in my uh, drive-in garage uh, theater. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> Um, it's kind of like a, a conspiracy. They make fun of them and at the same time, they're kind of scary true. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not caught up on your conspiracies of the world, yeah, just watch that. So last video, uh, we actually had, uh, you know, it was actually a great video. And um, uh, we had Torben, also known as uh, Alstrup from uh, the Samba, chime in. And uh, we had a great conversation. Uh, I ended up emailing him back and forth and we just talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, just technical stuff. And, uh, we also talked about, uh, he's working on, on a project IDF related. So we would benefit from that project. I'm not going to say what it is. It's just, I don't have permission to do so. So I'm not going to go there, but, uh, Ulstrup, Yeah. If somebody's going to do a paradigm change on IDFs, it's him. So looking forward to his project hopefully it does get completed and uh we have access to it we all have access to it we're going to continue the video that we did as a part two uh we're going to do what jimmy said and we're going to find the good things and the bad things about what he said okay i can already tell you that some of it is not true it's uh you know how it is when you when you go to the uh, searching for information and sometimes you'll find a really good article, but the information is incorrect. I mean, it's written really nice and it, it, it sounds like, oh my God, I found the third tablet, you know, the 10 commandments, you know, the 15 commandments, one of them fell off and broke. Well, you found the 15th commandment. Apparently the third tablet is bunk. So <laughs> there's goods and there's, and there's bads, okay? I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. There is a good thing and then there's a bad thing. Luckily, uh, Altstrup, or also known as Torben, uh, chimed in and uh, we've got everything straightened out. And uh, we're going to go over some uh, testing just to show you uh, if what he wrote is correct. So it's going to be a good video. So there we go. But first, for all the new users, all the new subscribers, of, uh, of my channel. We're gonna do a crash course on uh, Chinese IDFs. If you bought some of these, you wanna know this stuff. It's just a crash course. We're just gonna go everything that you really need to know before you run them. You cannot run them right out of the box. I can already tell you they're full of aluminum shavings. They're gonna plug up your idols. They're gonna, they're just gonna run like shit, okay? So you wanna pay attention to this video. We're gonna do a IDF crash course. Okay, very quickly, this should get you over the major hurdles that you, you need to know before you run them. IDF Crash Course 101. We'll call it 102, whatever, because this, this is like the, the second or third time we've gone over this stuff. Uh, first of all, um, these come in really dirty okay so it's recommended you just disassemble the whole thing open your pump you know don't remove it from here don't remove it from there just you know so that you're able to clean the circuits uh basically just take it all apart and put it in an ultrasonic cleaner if you have one if you don't just blow it out as best as you can that is the best advice that i can give you for that okay okay day so let's go ahead and actually start to disassemble this thing and i'll we'll go over what what the, you know the circuits are and all this stuff and basic settings and actually what you want to do before you actually run them and here we are we have our branch banking new uh, idf from china uh, no it's not really it's actually my used one this one uh, developed a funky leak down here in the circuits underneath the fuel bowl so i have a fuel leak it, it's very very slow it, it only becomes a, uh, pronounced when the engine is not running you got to drip, 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 drip. <laughs> Makes a huge mess. Perfect fire starter. Mm. Yeah. So I bought several and this is one of the ones that I'm using for uh, parts and modifications, testing. This is my guinea pig. So anyways, so basically you just remove your five little screws. Five screws. Okay. Uh, with your screwdriver. You remove this one. 
and that one. I don't have one. I don't have that one, but that's okay. You can leave that one, and the one that goes here, it doesn't really matter. It stays with with the top. So it goes up like this. Okay. First thing you want to do is calibrate this. Okay. Um, the Weber way and CB performance way is 14 millimeters from the very edge right here to the paper. Okay. 14 millimeters right there. So it would this thing would be about there. About there. Almost flush to these little nipples. These. Okay. Almost flush to that. That's that's about 14 millimeters. Okay. Here's the thing. If you're running duels, you gotta verify that you have the same amount of fuel. Because um, if you don't do this test, I mean your fuel could be way up here. Like way there. And then the other one will be way down here. Okay. You gotta verify. You have to have the same amount of fuel. I would say try to hit that little bump in fuel level. That bump right there. Somewhere around there. All right. If both of them are identical, run them. But like I said first, you have to do the cleaning. This is after you clean it. Okay. All right. Assuming you've cleaned it, everything, and, and it's all apart, and you're putting it all back together. Um, these are your idols. Okay. This is the idols. The mains go in here. They drop in there. You know, they screw on and you tighten them and that's it. Okay, but for right now, we don't care about this. Um, all we want to do is identify, which is this. This is the main. This is the main jet, okay. This is an F11 emulsion tube. Okay, I would recommend you guys get, get them from um, CB Performance. Get an original Weber. These are not drilled correctly. Okay. I believe this drilling should be way down here. And it's not. Okay. It's actually higher. So that's going to give you a different fueling curve. So um, get the Weber ones. F11. Um, you might also have to get this. Because I believe this is a China one. And this is a Weber one. This will not slide on. They will not mate together. Okay. They will not mate together. If this is Weber. The emulsion tube. All right, all right. So in here, on top of the emulsion tube, is what you call the air corrector. Okay, air corrector. Okay. We're not going to go on to the sizes because every application is different. So we're not going to go in there. We're not going to go there. All right. So you got these out. You've done a complete cleaning. We want to service the inside and your uh, your venturis for each throttle. Okay. These, sometimes the, the wire is bent and the, the actual thing is actually loose in there. You want to fix it, make sure that it tightens up so it's not loose in there. And you got good vacuum from the transitioning hole that goes from here to here. Okay, so that's what you want to do on these. Okay, uh, verify your sizes on your squirters. These things, squirters. I found that uh, I've had, I bought four carburetors and out of the four, I did not find one carburetor that had identical ones. One of them was like uh, like like 50 and then the other one was like 55 and then a different carburetor would be like uh, 60 and then the other one would be like 65. Okay, so they were all over the map. Okay, you want to know what this is. Okay, this right here is your uh, fuel screw. Okay. Now, to start out with, okay, this is like, okay, it's seated, lightly seated. It just stopped. I'm closing it, you know, cl clockwise, closed right there. Okay, initial startup uh, setting for this would be like a turn and a half. Okay, the instructions say one half turn to one turn and a half. But I found that having it at one, one and a half turns actually uh, gives you better results. The engine will actually start, okay, uh, versus half turn at uh, usually it will not it, it'll be starving from fuel uh, so what i do is uh, okay we're going to spin it really slow see if you guys notice okay that is one turn and we're going to go half more that's one and a half turns okay that's assuming that you have the correct idle okay we're not, we're not going to go into jetting that is different that'll be a different video or later on in the video actually we're going to be talking about that but for now it's one and a half turns out counterclockwise from being seated out. These, you just make sure that they're seated all the way down. Don't go crazy, you know, trying to tighten them too much. Just seated and this locking nut tight, that's it. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, this is where it gets really, really, really important. Okay, your your bearings, if, you, if they're from China, they're garbage, 
Okay, let me show you the bearings that I have from China. This, this is new bearing. That is a new bearing. That is also a new bearing, okay. They'll have like a rubbery seal, okay. These are sealed. Dust will not get in there, okay. So these are far superior. They're from Amazon. I'll put a link down there. So if you want to get these bearings for like $10 for a pack of 12, or a pack of 10, I'm sorry, pack of 10. Um, best deal ever. If you try getting them from uh, another website, they're like, they're like $10 a piece, okay. See the problem with these? These are made out of steel, and actually the air does leak through those little, it's got little cracks on the steel. It, so the dust, really fine dust, builds up, and it, and it ends up locking up the, the, the bearing. I have one right here that's locked up. Oh, actually it kind of moves, but I, it's, it, it feels like there's a lot of dirt in here. Okay, so, yeah, these are junk. These I ran them for about a year or so. Yeah, I, dirty inside, dirty. Okay, whatever. Replace your bearings. Once you do that, once you replace the bearings, you want to loosen your throttles. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Do this one. Loosen your throttles. Plates. Okay. Okay. Throttles are loose. Okay. Here's the fun part. Whoops. Too loose on one one. The screw fell off. We'll put it back on. Okay. Okay. Retract your screw. Retract it so that the little lever does not hit it. So you want to retract it enough. That it's kind of a little far away. Okay. Like so. See? It's not there anymore. Okay. You want to verify that you can move your throttles plates up and down and we can on this definitely see I'm moving them okay because sometimes the the factory will put like a like like a like glue in there so that they don't move okay that is a bad idea because if they're not calibrated correctly they're kind of stuck in one location so you might have to remove all the screws and actually remove the plate and remove all that junk from there so that the plates are loose and you're able to calibrate them. Otherwise, they will not calibrate correctly, okay? So this procedure would be bunk. I mean, it wouldn't work for you. So, okay. So we know that they move all over the place. Now, okay, we just slap it shut and you're gonna pull on, on this lever, kind of trying to get it close to the screw. And that's actually gonna move your, your plates, you know, to the correct place that they need to be so that you have Perfect, perfectly centered in the throttle area. Your plate will be perfectly centered. Okay. I have seen these move. When I do this, and I loosen them, and I very carefully just turn on the on the lever, closing them more, you know, putting pressure on it, and I can actually see them go, oh, they actually move from where they were. So I can tell you they're not they're not calibrated correctly at the factory. So be very careful. So one of the bad things that will happen if these things are not calibrated correctly is one, one carburetor will run more air than the other one, okay? Meaning that when you put your your uh, flow meter on each throttle, they'll have different values. One of these, they'll have different values right here when you're running the engine on, on idle, okay? That's why you wanna do this, okay? If you're not, if you don't have the identical uh, flow meters uh, flowing, uh, you're having problems or something. Something's wrong with the carburetor. Um, other thing that can happen is this edge will begin to wear and it'll have a, a ridge that builds up right on the edge. I know because I've seen that, okay? And oh, those carburetors were never cor correctly uh, calibrated. So they start wearing down as they go in and in and they start hitting the aluminum, the, the edge of the aluminum, they start hitting. Okay, you'll get a ridge right here. And you can actually break it off and go, oh, this is not good. Right? Right. So this is absolutely essential. Okay? All right. So those are tight. All four of them are nice and tight. It's fully calibrated. Okay. We go back up here. And now we are turning this thing until we hit the little lever with the little screw. Okay. Right there. It's hitting. So now you're going to do half a turn. Okay? 
half a turn on this from where it is. So, half a turn. That's half a turn. That should be enough to start the engine, okay? Um, if you go beyond half a turn, what's going to happen real quick, I'm just going to explain this to you because, you know, a lot of people, you know, oh, I'll just go a little bit beyond it and uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay. There are very, very tiny orifices right here. This is from the idle. Oh, let me see if I can, maybe you guys can see that. Okay, there's a tiny little hole right there. Okay, the edge of the butterfly is actually right covering that up. You don't want that to be uncovered. Like, see right there, it's open. It's, I can barely see it, but it's there. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, that's the reason you don't go beyond half a turn. From there, that should be enough to start the engine and idle, idle and everything. And then when you calibrate your enrichment screws, fuel enrichment screw, this one, you should get, be able to get more idle, okay? And uh, then you would actually back off to drop your idle, if anything, okay? Half a turn after hitting this little lever with the tip, okay? All right, so that is basically, let's see, your... Um, your crash course for the IDF, all right? Um, if there's uh, anything that comes to mind later on in the video, I'll bring it up. But for now, let's just say that is your crash course. Uh, you should be able to get it to run afterwards. You've cleaned it and everything, calibrated it and everything. You got new bearings. Um, like I said, these bearings are high tolerance. In other words, they're perfect. They're nice and tight, everything. These the shaft will actually be loose right here. The, the, the throttle shaft, the whole shaft will be really loose or it'll be loose over here. You know, it'll be, these are perfect. I mean, the shaft just goes in there super tight through here and the outer perimeter also, it'll go into the aluminum case nice and tight, you know, like just perfect. I mean, we're talking perfection here. I'll leave the link down there. Okay. So now that is your crash course. Let's, let's just do what we were talking about, the Jimmy tests. Look, we're not going to make fun of Jimmy because we all get horrible information sometimes. And it's not your fault, okay? It's, it's just, it, it just works out that way, okay? It just works out that way. Uh, we're just going to say uh, the good things and the bad things about running it the Jimmy way. So let's start with the first test with uh, Jimmy's article. He says that... The idles only work up to 2300 RPMs, but they start falling off more or less at 22. Not exactly his words, but that's what I gathered from with the information he said. Because he said that the, that the mains start working at 2200 RPMs, which means that the idles obviously have to be falling at 2200 RPMs. Anyway, let's just go with 2300 RPMs. So we're going to go ahead and remove the mains so that oh, there we go this one I'm loosening them up so I can get them out there we go that's two and that is one that is two I've already took out the other side so let's just go for a ride let me put this back on Okay, so we're going to use my computer, the CB Black Box program, to see the RPMs right here. So we'll see how high they go when we start running out of fuel because we've got our jets right here. Uh, I'm going to take my screwdriver because I have a feeling that I might be kind of far away and I don't want to be suffering. So I'm, I'm going to put these back on the side of the road. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and start it. We have only idle jets. That's all we have on the carburetors. Okay, starts fine. We had a nasty pop through the throttles, but that's more or less what IDFs do. So there you go. So first impression is uh, the the engine seems to like surge a little bit without without the mains being there. So it's like going uh, 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 like that. Twenty three. Twenty-five, 
27. Okay, we're on the side of the road, as you saw, we hit 2,900 RPMs, and I could tell right away that that was it. The As soon as I give it a hair more, it would just, the the, the thing would just fall off. It's like it was just starving for fuel, my throttle. It's just starving for, for fuel. So 29 is the maximum I, I was able to get out of it. 2,900, uh, far cry from uh, 2,300, okay? So that's a huge margin of error right there. All right. Next test. All right, we're back in the garage. Uh, we just got back from that ride and basically discovered that these actually are good for 2,900 RPMs. Here's the thing. Uh, it's all throttle dependent. If I crack the throttles too much, like, you know, I'm really cracking them open, it'll just fall off and your engine will just go bleh and not, go, not do anything. It'll probably, probably die. Um, so the throttle is dependent on the mains. Okay. When you go, when you open your throttles a lot, even if you're at low RPMs, if the mains are not here, it'll just fall off and your engine will probably just stall. Okay. So the mains are throttle, uh, activated. Okay. Throttle activated. How much throttle are you giving it? That determines when it least will activate. If you just driving like men's days and you're just barely cracking them open, just barely, you know, you're just barely cracking them open, then your idles would carry you all the way up to 2,900 RPMs. Your mains would still activate somewhere around, eh, I'm going to say 25 to 2,600 RPMs. Begin to activate, okay? Begin to activate. And they're not fully engaged. They're just barely starting to spew some fuel through here into your throttles. Yada, yada, yada. That means that his his article that says that only they they're only good for 2,300 RPMs is incorrect. Incorrect. Needs more information, basically. Okay. All right. So we're gonna leave that. Move on to the next thing. They he says that we need to be running our fuel screws at seven eighths, plus or minus one eighth. Okay. If if I go plus one eighth, then I get one full turn from being seated. So that would be. Let's see. Half a turn, one turn, okay, one turn. Turns out 60s I need to get one turn. So we're inside his specs. Let's go ahead and see what kind of, uh, well, drivability and uh, idle issues we might have or might not have. And uh, let's see if it actually works. I suspect, but I cannot confirm that we're gonna be running really rich. When we accelerate the engine a little bit, we're gonna go uh, extremely rich. Um, when you're idling, if you have the maximum idle here that you can get with the screws, doesn't matter where it lands, you know, whatever. Doesn't matter what size jets you use. You could, I could be running 70s, okay, 70s, and I get my best idle here. Your exhaust is not gonna stink. But as soon as you accelerate, you know. You turn your throttle just to bring it up a little bit, let's say 1800, it's probably gonna stink like a mother. Um, that is the problem. So we're going from 52s to 60s to get one turn. Hopefully nobody's confused. If you are, hit the rewind button. All right, so let's see what happens. Uh, this is not gonna turn out well, but you never know. Okay, I'm getting ready to go home. Um, temperature right now is 64. Remember, we had a tough time starting it with uh, when I plugged up those uh, uh, exhaust valve fuel things. I, did I say that backwards? I'm like Yoda. Lucky I am. Anyways, whatever. Uh, let's see with these 60s, how it uh, starts. So I'm only going to give it three pumps. One, two, three. All right. So we're going to crank it and see what happens. Normally, with my 52s, I get pops uh, the whole... I think all of, all of my um, my throttles pop. All four of them will pop like independently, like you know, they'll pop, and then it, it starts going away as the engine warms up. Uh, but let's see if this one pops. 
Nope, not a single pop. No pops, zero pops. Very responsive. Okay, so let's see what else, how it, how it uh, feels when I start driving in. I, I already drove it here, I can already tell you that the, the throttle response is excellent. There is no bogging, there is no hesitation, there is no, it's, it's perfect. This is absolutely perfect. Here's the drawback. Okay, like right now, I'm running at one turn. That's where I get my maximum idle with these 60s, which is too big, I think. It doesn't stink because I'm idling. But as soon as I give it gas, there's a stench that comes from my window because my exhaust is just right here. I got a side pipe going that way. And I can smell it. Anyways, so I'm just gonna do this for a little while. Perfect. No misfires, no numb. Ah, fuchila, fuchila, okay, okay. Oh my goodness gracious, that is atrocious. Even though I have a catalytic converter, it absolutely just stunk like rich. It's a rich smell. So the 60s are basically masking the, the, the hesitation at the very beginning. Okay, so that's pretty much what we've learned so far. Let's see how the drivability is though. Okay, so the like, let me put it in reverse, watch. The engine's cold, okay? Awesome, no hesitations, nothing. Nothing, going forward now. Wow, okay, this just stinks <laughs> to high heaven when I, when I raise the, the idle. Okay, here we go. Perfect, let's see. No bog, oh, perfect. No bog whatsoever. Let me see. Let off the gas, give it a gas. Perfect, no bog. It just stinks to high heaven, that's all. All right, so 60s work wonderfully, but they're running really rich. Okay, before we take off the 60s, I want to see what happens when I go wide open throttle. I want to see if it goes richer or stays the same or goes leaner. Okay, here it goes. She hardly moved. Hardly moved, barely moved. Um, it went a little like a hair lean and then it went right back to to where it was so okay very little effect now we go to the 55 luckily I have access panels yay taking off those idols yeah hate to be you if you <laughs> if your access panels don't exist Ta-da! See? Let me get the other one. 55s. All right, so the car's been sitting for approximately 10 hours. I had a short day today, so 10 hours. All right, so I'm gonna start the car. This are, these are the 55s now. Uh, the fuel screw is out to a turn, a hair over one quarter. I would say a turn and a third. One turn and one third, more or less. Okay, so let's see what happens. See if we pop. We shouldn't, it's 55s. No pops, zero pops. Sometimes it'll pop if I do this. No pop. No pop. Oh, I heard a slight cut. Cut. Yeah, slight pop. Okay. There's another one. Okay. So the the uh, what you call it is 
it's not perfect it does pop and it's not that cold but let's see if it stinks I'm gonna accelerate bring up the rpms to about uh, 1800 and see if it stinks because it doesn't stink right now okay because I'm, I'm running on my best uh, uh, fuel screw setting with the uh, with the idles and basically it doesn't matter what size idles you put in there when you do that uh, basically you will run very fine and the engine will not stink until you start accelerating the engine to a higher rpm there we go let's see Waiting for that whiff of air. Nothing. I got nothing. Catalytic is probably doing its job though. So it's probably masking a slight rich condition. But uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, the Y-band doesn't work until it basically warms up, so there's no point in looking at it. Um, all right, um, let's get her moving. See if, he, uh, if I have any boggings, and the answer is no. 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 So far, so good. Okay. No hesitation. Hesitation. Let me get off the gas again. Let me give it again. No hesitation. Oh, I think I got a little hint of a hesitation. Okay, so I already pretty much had a slight hesitation when I was shifting into fourth gear. So, um, yeah, 55, the hesitation becomes apparent. With the 60, it's non-existent. Um, but I want to see what happens when I go wide open throttle. See if it actually moves, because uh, it's running a little leaner. Wondering if the needle is going to move to the leaner part or it's just going to stay where it is. Let's see what happens. Okay, then I have to back off because I'm going way too fast. Yeah, it picks up that quick. So this is where it idles when I get my best idle on the Richmond screws. Uh, yeah, it's almost center. On Stoich. Perfect. Just thought you might want to see that. It's time to summarize the whole thing, uh, this article. Okay, so basically his article is incorrect. Um, the idols actually go above 2300 in my case they went up all the way up to 2900 also the running at one turn or seven eighths to one turn is incorrect also you're running way too rich you're basically masking a problem yes i'll give them the uh you know thumbs up on the drivability but as soon as you go off idle, you know, you're cracking your throttles ever so slightly. The stench is unbelievable. You're running way too rich. So you're masking a problem. But drivability is really, really good. I mean, I, I'm not going to say that it, it wasn't. It's really, really good. Your gas mileage is going to suffer. And right now, gas prices are very expensive. Okay. That's what we learned. I'm not going to show you, you know, running the 52s here because it's just going to accentuate the uh, hesitation. It's going to get worse with the 52s, even though I get my best gas mileage. So I'm probably going to run 55s for a while and I might go to the 52s uh, if I if I figure out how to remove the stumble. Me and Alstrup talked about my build, my Type 4 engine, and I give him all the specs and everything. And uh, we thought we might have a timing issue on the mapping for the cb performance okay we looked at it or actually i looked at it and uh went for the drive and i did discover an area where i had made a mistake it wasn't until i actually visually looked where the cursor the green cursor that dances all over the map you know it's doing that shit okay i saw it go over a four you know four degree i was like oh shit no wonder
Okay, so I went ahead and changed that. That did help. Does help. It does, you know, help with the hesitation. However, it's still there. It's still there. So um, we also talked about the exhaust, the exhaust on the on, on your car. If it's too big, the piping is too big, that'll cause a, a over scavenging. So what's happening is uh, your gases are over scavenging and basically going in into the uh, combustion chamber and basically pulling gas out of the air that's coming in through the intake and going right out the exhaust, giving you a lean condition. So that also, so it has to have the proper exhaust for it. And so it, you don't get that hesitation. Other thing that can cause the hesitation is a 009, an original mechanical 009. You will always have a stumble at the beginning because the timing is just not able to climb to a higher timing setting because it's all depending on engine revolution and how fast your distributor is spinning to you know begin to open up and so that it advances your timing. So yeah, mechanical is probably bad, bad, bad. You probably need a vacuum one. Um, there are many distributors out there that have vacuum. That are, that are bigger, you know, they usually they have that red cap on there. You know, they have a vacuum line they can hook them up to. That might help. Also, um, having, obviously, the wrong jets, too lean, will give you that, okay, for the idles, okay. Okay, so the other thing that will cause a hesitation, I almost forgot about this, is actually your ignition, um, your coil. It might be too weak. That blue coil that comes with the, be with, with the beetle basically might be too weak, okay. So you need to upgrade to a flamethrower or something like that, but make sure that you match the ohms of the coil to your electronic points. Otherwise, you're just gonna fry your electronic points. As far as the exhaust valve pump jet, this guy, this, this guy down here. Woo, okay, that guy. Okay, the smaller you get that, and I believe the only place you can get them is Europe. I don't think CB Performance carries them except for the Zero, which is for the center mount. You know, if you're only running one carburetor on your engine in the center, okay, you would use a Zero. But CB doesn't carry the 30, 40, 50, you know, it doesn't carry any of those. But I suspect, this is just me, okay? This is my theories because of what I've learned. It's basically, as if you get that bearing a little bit higher, you might be able to uh, shorten the amount of the fuel that escapes into the into the bowl. Thus, you get your squirter a little bit quicker. That's all theoretical on my part, okay? What I mean by that is this. Uh, this valve has a little ball bearing, as you saw in the previous video, and we took it out by removing that little keeper right there, okay? If this keeper is pressed in, let's say, half a millimeter or even a millimeter, into it here, that means that the ball bearing is gonna be closer to that orifice right there. And basically, it doesn't have to travel all that distance to plug it up, and then you get your squirt, okay, on your squirters. Um, so my theory is that if I just press these in a little bit more, like you know, like I said, like a half a millimeter to a millimeter, the, uh, and you know, and you still hear the, the little, that little sound. Okay, you know, you, you'll still be able to, you know, uh, suck a lot of fuel through here so that it goes into your pump and you're, you're not starving it and you get your, your squirt immediately as soon as you crack your throttle. I'm thinking if you buy these, like, uh, if you're having this hesitation problem and you just get maybe like a 45, even a 40, I think you would have a dramatic improvement on hesitations, on, you know, removing the hesitations. This is all theoretical. Um, I'm just visualizing it in my head and I can see that I'm, my head says it, I am correct, okay? Uh, who am I to say that, right? Yeah, uh, basically, this is, this is, you know, this is a very problematic carburetor. I can already visualize what Torben is visualizing here for, to improve this. I, I have a pretty good idea what he's gonna be doing. So hopefully he does come through and uh, just, you know, Give us a huge help with these monsters that are just, they're great carburetors, right? You get good power. They're just not, the drivability is just lacking. Drivability is lacking. And um, I'm thinking this is one of our solutions here. I'm thinking, like I said, either you press it in a little bit deeper, like a, like a half a millimeter or to a millimeter. And that should lessen the delay that happens here. 
while you pressurize your things and you get your squirt quicker because this thing will seal quicker okay all right i've already added fuel to this one and basically i already uncalibrated it this thing sorry these the nut right there which is i think it's a 5.5 millimeter uh socket one of these that goes right there okay so i basically put it back to where it was when it was uh from factory that's the way it came more or less so i was having problems with the throttle and look um, so the reason i knew there was something wrong was because when i cracked the throttles nothing happens right nothing happens there's nothing coming out of that little valve down there you can see the the ball bearings barely wanting to move but it's not moving and i'm not getting any squirts over here see okay now when you go a lot more see you see that little wave that came from there you see that see that see that all right that tells me that this screw is way too inward you need to bring it out so what we're gonna do is actually see if i can do this without making a spilling mess yeah we got it we got this all right so i'm gonna put this socket in here i'm gonna go two full turns one two okay let's try that cracking the throttle again Oh, okay, there you go. I'm barely cracking it. And you see that wave coming from there? You see? Barely cracking it. And you see me over here just barely doing this. See that? And I've got a squirt. Okay, just barely doing that. A little while ago, we were not getting a squirt or anything. See that? Okay. I'm not going to leave it there. I'm actually going to give it another turn. Just because I want to make sure that this is not going to be a part of my hesitation. So, one turn. That'll work. Okay, let's do that again once again. See what it does. See? We've got that little wave coming. As soon as I crack my throttles. I'm just barely doing it that much. That much. Okay. Okay, now you, can, now you know that you took the slack out of here okay inside the slack is gone so now the next thing that i did the next tip for you is this so the reason you were seeing the squirt happen instantaneously when i was cracking it like just barely moving it like that when we took out the slack from here because we brought this the nut outward clock hunter clockwise i put th three turns and we got rid of that little hesitation this will the, this will remove 70 percent of your hesitation the other 30% of the hesitation will be removed by this valve. Okay. Now, this is implying that you've basically got everything nice and square on your setup. Okay. Your, your idles are perfect. Your exhaust system is the correct uh, tubing. You know, like my two liter engine requires a one and a half. Okay. Should, I should not have anything bigger than one and a half tubing on that uh, Sidewinder. And that's exactly what I have. So that's that wasn't the problem. Also, your timing and your map, if you have a computer, you know, make sure you don't have errors in there. Uh, you're not running a 009 mechanical. Um, that'll cause it. Um, all these things, you've basically squared away. And you still have that stumble. This will remove about 70% of the uh, stumble right there. Let me see if I can get more light there. There we go. Yeah, 70%, 30%, okay? So what I did on this one, as you can tell, I actually pressed it in. See, I actually pressed in the keeper a little deeper, okay? Using a just a drill or a punch, you can do, do that. And I just went, you know, pressed it in a little deeper. The valve is still, you know, still doing this. You hear that 
Okay, it's still doing that. I put it in my mouth and I still, you know, sucked on it and blew on it and it's still functioning perfect. I can tell that it's, it's going to be able to flow enough fuel for the pump from there. Okay, the other way, the, the, the bearing inside or the valve inside is actually too far away, way down here. So it takes a lot of time for it to travel up and plug up that orifice right there. Okay, that's your delay right there, your fuel pump delay. So you don't want, you know, you want to remove the fuel pump delay so that your squirt happens earlier. So that's exactly what we did. Let's go ahead and measure it, see what it measures. I sunk it in uh, 0.75 on both my carburetors. I already did this. I've been testing all week. This video has been done for ever. Okay. That much, more or less. Uh, the other ones are actually at exactly 75 Okay, 75, this is 72. Okay, that's how much I sunk it. And because I did that, the throttles is instantaneous. So basically I removed 100% of the uh, hesitations. Even when shifting gears, the hesitations are gone. I mean, I've been driving it the whole week. Driving it really nice, really slow, medium, and drove it like I stole it. I couldn't get a hesitation, okay? Could not get a hesitation. Simply by pressing that thing in there that made the world of difference and obviously having these calibrated correctly world of difference okay so that is your tech tip for the day aren't you glad you waited to the end eh? Eh? anyways adios muchachos adios muchachas